All right, let's take a look and see what we have here. It's a new multimeter from Kai Wheats, the KM601. It comes with all your standard stuff like probes, a temperature or thermocouple. It comes with a set of batteries and it comes with a spare set of batteries that I've already installed in this meter. What I want to do today in this video is talk a little bit about multimeter counts. Here you can see this is labeled as 9,999 counts. Counts are a way that we rate multimeter performance. And we're going to go ahead and cover that in a few minutes. PCB Way, the one-stop shop for all your creator and maker needs. PCB Way has a number of solutions to help you prototype PCBs that include manufacturing and shipping services at a competitive price point. CNC milling and 3D printing solutions are available to help with any mounting, case, or enclosure needs. PCB Way can help with PCB assembly by sourcing components and installing them to your prototypes. PCB Way provides customers with a support portal, allowing access to staff that can help you with all aspects of your project. Before we get too far down the road, I did want to mention that Kai Wheat sent me this very capable multimeter free of charge in exchange for this video review. It's an auto-ranging, auto-sensing multimeter. Here you can see it's looking to pick between volts, ohms, and continuity. As I mentioned today, we're going to take a look at its auto-ranging capabilities and how counts work on multimeters, specifically this multimeter. So let's talk a little bit about what are counts. And counts are used to define resolution, not accuracy. So the more counts that you have on your meter, the more granular your measurement can be. It's not accuracy because your meter may still be inaccurate, but has a high resolution on its measurement because of the number of counts. Now in the past, counts were expressed as digits. So for example, you might see a multimeter that would say three and a half digits. So three and a half digits would be 1,999 counts. A full digit is anywhere from zero to nine. Half digits are usually zero and one. Three and a half digits, 1,999. Now you'll see multimeters on the market that might be 4,999 counts. And sometimes this would be expressed as three and four fifths digit or three and three quarters digit. And the naming convention got really out of hand and there was no standards. So you've seen a transition in the multimeter space where folks now use counts. And even with counts, it gets a little bit confusing. So you take a look at the Kai Wheats KM601 and it says right on the meter, 9,999 counts. And some of the marketing material is referred to as 10,000 counts. Well, if you count one through 9,999, you have 9,999 counts. If you count zero in that, now you have 10,000 counts. And you would also sometimes refer to this as a four digit meter. So it's a little confusing and that's the reason why we're making this video. So let's talk a little bit about range. Range is the span of increments that can be measured by the multimeter. Multimeters generally have more than one range and multimeters are defined as manual or auto ranging. And most auto ranging multimeters are manual as well. And this just means that in order to move between two sets of increments, you have to either manually adjust your meter or it will do it on its own. Now the Kai Wheats will do it on its own and it does a very good job of that. So in the table below taken from the product information, you can see DC voltage and we have 99.99 millivolts. That is its first range. Now its second range is 999.9 millivolts. And you can see the decimal point moved. The movement of that decimal point is indicative of a change in range, but it also changes the counts because the meter can only count to 9999. If we want to count over 99 millivolts, we now need to move the decimal point and change our range. On the second half of the first line, you can see the same condition is true for counting volts. It starts out with 9.999, moves to 99, and then up to 1,000. Now, at the end of this first row, you see plus or minus 0.5% plus 3. Now, this determines your multimeter's accuracy. And what it means is, is that the specification for this meter is plus or minus 0.5% of the range, and then three numbers on the least significant digit. So that means that when you do a measurement, 
nothing is 100% accurate. So you will get some variance based off of what you're measuring. Here is the measurement, plus or minus 0.5% and three of the least significant digit. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of different ranges and we're going to see how the meter performs. So here we have the multimeter connected to a power supply. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust the voltage output on the power supply. And we should be able to see how the multimeter ranges. So right now we're set at one volt. Let's go ahead and let that settle. There we go. Now I'm going to slowly turn this up. And once we get to 10 volts, you should see the decimal point move. And here we go. It says over limit or overloaded. And now you can see the range has shifted. And this is because of the counts. It cannot go over 9.999, just as we talked about earlier. Now I can continue to go up in voltage, but my power supply that I'm using only goes up to 32, which is not enough to change the range. So next, let's take a look at resistance ohms and measure that, and we'll take a look at how the range changes based off of the counts. Okay, what we have here is a device. It's called a DMM Check Plus, and essentially it's a reference standard used to gather measurements for things like multimeters. You use a device like this when testing a variety of multimeters to determine the accuracy of those meters. So here we're going to take a look at resistance. And the first measure we're going to make is a 100 ohm resistance. And so you can see based off of the counts and based off of the range detected by the auto ranging, it's coming back at 99.8. We're going to make a jump to 1000 ohms. Now you can see the decimal point has moved here based off of the previous range. And this comes back at 997. Now let's jump up to 10,000 ohms. Again, the decimal point has adjusted itself. You can see the range has switched. And now let's go up to 100,000 ohms. And again, you can see the same condition. So for this demonstration, we are going to use a different multimeter, the Anang AN8008, to output a square wave. Here you can see we're set on that setting. And then we can adjust the frequency of the square wave and read that by our Chi Wheats KM601. So here we have the multimeter set on Hertz. And then you can see here we're close to a 50% duty cycle, is what you would expect from a square wave and it's detecting 50.04 hertz. And here the meter says it's putting out 50 hertz. As we're going to cycle through this, we will see the range change based off of our count limitation. So it had moved from 50 to 100. The next move we will see will be at 1000 hertz or one kilohertz. And we saw the jump there. This meter is only capable of going up to 2000 um, hertz, so or 2 kilohertz. So we're not going to go ahead and go any further with this demonstration. If you're interested in getting a Kai Wheats KM601, there will be a link posted below. I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Hopefully this gave you some insight on auto ranging and multimeter counts. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.